Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment, and today I wanted to talk about the Ibobo people and the Ekpo masks, but I want to kind of give a warning first. So, very briefly at the end of this video, I will be talking about animal sacrifice. If that is something that bothers you, that you are not comfortable with, please exit out of this video. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you tomorrow. If you are still here, <laughs> hi. So the um, Ibobo people are from the from Nigeria, from the southern sort of coast, located between the Delta and the Cross River. And today two million people live there. So within the Ibobo political system, there is a society called the Ikpo, and to execute sort of social control, these masks are used. Now, while they are art, they are also a integral part of the Ibobo culture. And so I kind of want to look at them from that perspective of art appreciation while I discuss when and why and how and where they're used and who makes them. So these masks make up the greatest works of art in the Ibobo society. And isn't that just absolutely stunning? Okay, so Ikpo literally translates to ancestor. And so why these masks are worn. So these masks sort of commemorate the deceased they help the Ikbo society with a political, the legislature, the judiciary, and the religious roles within the village. The village elders make decisions that are then enforced um, by members of the Ikbo society who act as messengers of the ancestors. So even though the identity of the Ikbo members is known, they always perform their political duties wearing a mask. So who can wear a mask? Well, these masks are worn by exclusively by the Ibobo men. And if you want to have sort of political influence and you want to rise amongst the different ranks, you need to have wealth. There needs to be some sort of monetary thing involved. Now there are actually two kinds of masks and this one right here is called the idok and these are tend to be the male the more masculine form of mask if they are darker in color they can represent the mystic forces of the forest um, they're large they have exaggerated features many have the articulated jaw which i think is really really cool um, and they represent the corrupt, amoral sort of souls that are sentenced to death and perpetual ghosthood. So these appear at night paired with sort of the black raffia and the dances are very erratic and wild. And I'm going to link in the description box a video of a gentleman wearing one of these masks and doing that dance. I highly encourage you check it out because it is incredible. The second mask I want to show you looks like this and sometimes like this. And this is called the Mafun and these are light in color. They're more feminine features. There's no articulated jaw um, and these are worn Obviously there's more color and they're, they represent the spirits who have reached paradise. And these masks come out during the daytime as to honor the recent dead and the annual agricultural festivals. So the dances that are paired with these masks are very slow, they're graceful, um, the costumes and the fabric are all bright colored, the clothing is very bright. Um, and the Mafon masks sort of embody the souls of people who have lived on earth that were productive, you know, they were morally sound, they were law-abiding, and these are still, 
even though these represent female and they're more feminine, they're still worn by men. So these masks can be made to look like your ancestors or made to look like village heroes. And typically they're carved from a lightweight wood called yukot. And this is a palm wine tree. So there is a rope that ties the mask to the back to help hold it on. Isn't that amazing? And there, sometimes there is a horizontal piece of wood that's fitted within the mask, it's inserted, and the wearer can bite onto this for additional support while they're wearing such a huge, heavy mask. So these masks can cover their body and this wearer right here is showing, um, they have put charcoal on their arms and legs to darken their skin. And that's something that also goes along with wearing some of these masks. Now, so there are different adornments. So you can see some of the raffia and some of the palm leaves and things. Um, so from what I was able to learn about the carvers, and it's not the most amount of information, but these masks are called Iso Ikpo, which means face of ex uh, Expo. And you give the carver your facial measurements, um, the details, the mask specifications you want. And a lot of this has to do with the wearer's rank and sort of where they sit amongst the Ekpo society. You give the carver money. And once they're done, you give them a rooster and an alcoholic drink called Yufofo. And this is made from palm wine. Here's the trigger warning. So the chicken and the wine are used as sacrifice to appease the spirits that inhabit the mask or sort of a thanks to the spirits that protect the carver. So I'm going to link in the description box all the different articles and write-ups um, I was able to find to make this video. Obviously, authenticity and facts are my goal for all these videos. And this video was kind of difficult to make as there's just not a lot of information around to find. Um, if you know of any additional information about the Ikpo mask or the Ibobo Society, please put it in the comment box below. I would love to read and learn more. This is absolutely fascinating. Um, there is one last thing I want to talk about, and that is if you go to look up the Ikpo mask online, you will find that there are some for sale. Now these are ones from museums that I have printed pictures from. But there are some out there from uh, museums and galleries within the United States that sell African art and within different websites that just sell African art. Now, the Ikpo mask is a part of a, the cultural heritage of the people of Nigeria. So if you see one for sale for thousands of dollars, that's not something that should be exported out of the country. If you see one that's maybe a replica or a knockoff, I would highly check the sources. If this is something you want to own, I would ask a lot of questions to see where the money is going to purchase a replica. Is it going to a carver in Nigeria that makes these masks? Is it going to um, an African artisan? that's making these sort of replicas, I would just ask a ton of questions because there is a huge difference between appreciation and appropriation. And we, we wanna make sure as consumers and art lovers that we support artists without taking from a culture. And these masks are just, they're so beautiful. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.